You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first created human beings, the angels who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created to do nothing but worship Him and serve Him, they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when as Allah azza wa jalla tells us in the Quran, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the malaika that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to place the human beings as an authority on this earth. قَالُوا أَتَجَعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ They said, are you going to put there uh, people that will cause corruption and spill blood? Meaning this is an imperfect creature. You know, usually uh, if a person, you know, if you had the choice to create around you, you would just create those that would serve you, those that would have no choice but to serve you. So the angels, you know, they were confused. They, they know that they've been created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't have the choice but to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've been created without any form of need or, or anything of that sort. So they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are you doing this? وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ You know, we always praise you and declare your perfection. And we sanctify you, O oh Allah. So what's the point and what's the purpose of creating these human beings? And then on top of that, making them an authority on earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded with a very simple response. قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, I know that which you don't know. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the angels is that He has created every creation with a special type of purpose and everything has a different type of purpose. And subhanAllah, you know, the beauty of the artist shows in his arts, right? You know, so when you see the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that there is something that reflects that attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, and you'll find that different creations uh, are a reflection of those different attributes. Now, there are some names, so for example, Ar-Rahman, the Rahman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful. Ar-Rahman, everyone benefits from the Rahman of Ar-Rahman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 100 parts of mercy. 99% of that mercy, 99 parts of that mercy, have been reserved for the Day of Judgment, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only sent one to this world. And from that one percent of mercy, you have the mercy between a mother and a child, the mercy of human beings to animals, animals to animals, humans to other humans. All of that comes under the Rahmah of Ar-Rahman. So everyone benefits from the Rahmah of Ar-Rahman. It's, his Rahmah is reflected in every dealing of compassion and mercy and all forms of love and expressions of love um, that we have in this world. Uh, and of course, we, we haven't seen anything yet because on the Day of Judgment we will see the true Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, manifest itself. وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا We'll see Rahim, uh, that, which is exclusive mercy to the believers on the Day of Judgment. So again, you will see Rahman is reflected in everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows even those that deny Him to live happily in this dunya. Right? Even the people that deny Him are allowed to live in this dunya and to live happily in this dunya. And Allah provides for them despite what they say about Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and despite their shirk and so on and so forth. So that is the Rahmah of Ar-Rahman in action. The Karam of Al-Kareem, the generosity, the benevolence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides to human beings much more than what we deserve. Even those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to do our part, look how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to us. And that is from his, his generosity and His benevolence, right? So no matter what, look at the gift of your eyesight, for example. وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you were to count the blessing, what, the blessings from one blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would not be able to do that. So take all of your ibadah and try to measure it against one blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. And you'll see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity is far greater than anyone else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you far more than what you have given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, think about even the animals then. The animals do not, you know, they, they, they are pursuing their desires without any restriction, right? You know, they, they're not praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day. Of course, in their very being and in their very nature, they do their own form of tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, you know, look at the animals. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides to them, although they do nothing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So we're benefiting from the, the generosity. All of these different creations benefit from the generosity of Al-Kareem. Uh, the karam of Al-Kareem. Then you start to see, for example, some attributes that are specific to one creation. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Ghafoor. Allah is the most forgiving. Now, 
do the angels uh, do the angels need to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, because they're not capable of sinning in the first place. And then you have, on the other hand, uh, the animals who will not be held accountable. So they don't need to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either. So who benefits the most from Al-Ghafoor? We are in need of Al-Ghafoor. So you see the action, you see the expression, the manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness whenever He allows us to seek His forgiveness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to overlook all of the sins that we do uh, because we have turned back to Him seeking forgiveness. Allah is Al-Halim, He's forbearing. Allah subhanahu wa you know, forbearing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish us right away. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again the angels, you know, they don't sin in the first place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Halim for who? Allah is Halim for us. Right? So these attributes express themselves in these various creations just as beautiful art shows the beauty of the artist. And so we see the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes. So with that again, each creation has its own specific purpose, its own specific function. So we see for example animals again, they pursue their desires without restriction. So let's look at the wisdom of the creation of the human beings. The animals pursue their desires without restriction. The angels have no desires. All they do is they love to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've been created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they love the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why they even come to us and surround us when we're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, they support us whenever we're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, they take our names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we worship Allah because the angels just love ibadah. That's all they care about. So you have opposites. Then you have the animals. The animals have to eat, you know, they eat, they drink, they sleep, and they mate. Whereas angels do none of the above. Right? The angels don't need to eat and drink, they don't need to sleep, and they don't need to mate. They worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them. So they don't have any form of need. Now, where do we fall into this whole equation as human beings? And Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says very beautifully, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created angels with purpose but with no desires. And Allah has created animals with desires and no purpose. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man with both purpose and desires. Therefore, when a person's purpose is stronger than his desires, he becomes like an angel. He becomes closer to, to, to being an angel. And on the other hand, if your desires are stronger than your purpose, then you become closer to being uh, an animal. And this was, these are the beautiful words of Imam, of Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah. So you've got these two bars basically. You know, where do you, where do you, uh, go, where do you go closer to? What do you incline towards? as a human being? Do you incline towards more of being an angel or more of being an animal? And subhanAllah, you know, one of the, uh, and, and that purpose that Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah is talking about is the purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The only reason I have created human being and jinn is to worship me. Now think about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated upon us 50 prayers initially. And it's from the mercy of Allah that He took it down to 5. Imagine if we had to pray 50 prayers a day. We wouldn't have time to do the other stuff. You wouldn't have time to be watching this Quran weekly video right now. You wouldn't have time for Facebook. You wouldn't have time for anything. You'd just be doing salah all the time. From the mercy of Allah, He allowed that 5 to cover the 50. But it shows you our purpose, right? We're here to worship too. But you know what else? It, you know, subhanAllah, from the fawa'id that Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentioned, the, the beautiful things that we can derive from this, is the fact that you'd still find human beings who have the choice to live out their empty desires, or to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the angels. And you will still find a group of people that will choose worship over desire, shows you the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. And you know what? وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Those believers, those, that special group of people that choose worship despite having the choice, that choose to free themselves from those other desires despite having the choice, and, and only to moderately you know, engage in those things from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He allows us to do that without excess and denial, without ifrat and tafreet. It's the, it's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the fact that you still have human beings that choose that, and you know what? They derive enjoyments from that. 
And the way that a believer loves Allah and loves to worship Allah is so much stronger than the way that any human being will love anything else. It's so much stronger than any other desire. The desire to achieve the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so much stronger. What, per, what person of purpose can you find that would outmatch Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu in his purpose to try to find the love and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shows you the power of Allah's love, the power of ibadah and the superiority of ibadah over all of those empty shahawat.